Are you ready for the most epic ride of your life? Buckle up, because the 2023 Ford Everest Platinum is about to take you on a wild adventure. This bad boy is packed with all the bells and whistles you could ever want in an SUV. Leather seats. Check. Sunroof. Check. Advanced safety technologies. Double check. It's like Ford took all of our wildest dreams and put them into one vehicle. But what's the real deal with this new model? Don't worry, we got you covered. We'll take a closer look and tell you all about the 2023 Ford Everest Platinum. Trust us, you don't want to miss this ride. Let's dive in. Like its predecessor, the new generation Ford Everest was developed and engineered in Australia and is directly competing with the Toyota Prado and Isuzu Mu X. It combines family friendliness with off-road and towing capability while using the same body-on-frame construction as the Ranger and having coil rear suspension. For those who don't want to forego all the extras, the new top-of-the-line Everest Platinum that we're evaluating today adds a veneer of luxury to the equation. Although the new flagship 44 from Ford shares certain design cues with its predecessor, it sports a bluffer front end and more striking C-shaped daytime running lights. There is a lot to talk about with newer interior displays, a long list of driver assist systems, and a new V6 diesel engine with permanent 4WG. Remarkably few changes were made to the Everest Platinum for the 2023 model year after we test drove one, including additional steel underbody protection and a black painted top. Costing $77,530 before on-road expenses, the Everest Platinum V644 is just under $85,000 drive away using a Melbourne postcode, according to the Ford website. This places it just below $84,000 drive away using a Melbourne postcode when compared to a Toyota Prado VX at $76,348 before on-road costs. A drive away Prado Kakadu costs around $95,000. The top Isuzu UX LST costs $65,990 drive away, while the Mitsubishi Pajero Sport GSR costs $64,490 drive away for those looking for a competent 44 workhorse with some luxuries but on a tighter budget. Although the Isuzu and Mitsubishi aren't as good, they still save you a lot of money, $20,000. The Nissan Patrol, a thirstier machine that uses less gasoline, is a different choice that is worthwhile to take into account based on current prices. The Thai variant has a drive-away price of $89,600. All expenditures, with the exception of on-road expenses, include luxury car tax, if applicable. We must first discuss wait times before going on. The demand for the Platinum, according to Ford Australia, has been exceptional and is currently outstripping supply. The manufacturer warns that if you buy a vehicle right now, it could not arrive until about May 2023. Obviously, Toyota, Isuzu, and Mitsubishi all have stock difficulties of their own. Despite being a large vehicle, the side stairs and grab handle on the A pillar make it easy for shorter individuals to enter. The heated and ventilated quilted leather seats with contrast stitching feel durable, have adequate thigh and side bolstering, and are easy to clean. The leather-like material used to accent the doors is contrasted with white stitching and wood inlays. The internal door knobs have an intriguing design, they are incorporated into the cushioned armrest, and are actuated by applying pressure to them. The leather-wrapped heated steering wheel allows reach adjustment in addition to height adjustment, unlike the previous Everest. Under the indicator stock above a dial and switch bank for the lights, and on the right side of the steering column is where the starting button is located. It can display menus for lane assist and adaptive cruise control features, trip statistics, off-road pitch and roll angles, trailer-specific fuel consumption, navigation directions, speed limit signs, and oil-slash-water temperatures. The large digital cluster is located behind the driver's seat. Naturally, there is also a tachometer on the left and a speedometer on the right, both of which are easier to see than the previous Everest's garish cluster. The audio volume and cruise control controls are located on the left side of the steering wheel, while the buttons to cycle between the different cluster menus and skip tracks are located on the right spoke. A convenient integrated trailer brake controller with gain settings is located on the left side behind the driver. If you turn your head to the left, you'll see a 12-inch portrait touchscreen that looks especially good when presenting the starting sequence, in-depth live maps, Apple CarPlay on a three-quarter screen or 360-degree views with 44 driveline diagrams. While the animated Everest front end in the top right corner directs you to car settings, pressing a point along the upper horizontal toolbar brings up the home multimedia menu. For ventilation settings, there is a lower touch area that is supplemented with buttons. The screen responds nicely to pinches, swipes, and taps once it is up and running, much like a phone, although its load times might be faster, and there is occasionally lagging of features that are not preloaded. 
Bang & Olufsen's 12-speaker premium sound system, which is boosted by the Everest Platinum's excellent sound deadening, is exclusively available in that model. A wireless charging pad is located below the screen between the USB-A and USB-C ports. Although the shift-by-wire gear stick requires some getting used to, it is preferable than the common circular dials now in style. Behind the gear stick is an electronic park brake button. You may select between rear-wheel drive, low-range, fixed 44 high, 44 auto for roads, and huge rotary dial below the transmission tunnel. The ring surrounding it rotates to let you to switch between terrain modes, which modify the accelerator response and traction controls to suit takeoff over specific surfaces. Two glove boxes, a modest center console, a sunglasses holder in the roof, pop-out cup holders on the outside borders of the upper dash, and bottle-sized door bins are among the other storage options. The middle row seats offer enough of legroom for adults and a good 1,443 millimeters of shoulder space, but despite their airy look, the enormous glass sunroof appears to restrict headroom for taller people. The backrests and seat bases are angled backwards, and there are cup holders and map pockets as well as roof vents and reading lights. Roof vents are preferable to vents mounted behind the console. A flip-down center armrest with USB-A and USB-C ports, temperature controls, and even heated outboard seat bases. With the bigger section being on the left to make it simpler to reach the third row seats, the backrests may move and tilt or tumble in a 60 by 40 ratio. Although the third row did suit a video tester Paul, the entrance aperture and rear headroom are generally child-friendly. In the third row, there are also cup holders and vents. The sixth and seventh seats, which fold flat into the floor when not in use in this platinum-grade vehicle, are activated by buttons located in the boot area, which matches the motorized tailgate. There is enough for a few bags even with the third row in use, but the boot is obviously much bigger with five seats. It increases from 259 liters to 898 liters and grows even more to 1,818 liters with two seats. Under the loading floor, there is a plastic storage container with equipment for changing the wheel, which is attached below the car. The Ford V6 engine, which was recently modified and was formerly used in the massive F-150 American truck, is the Platinum Standard powertrain. The 3.0-liter turbo diesel generates a powerful 600 newton meter of peak torque between 1750 and 2250 rpm and 184 kilowatt of peak power at 3250 rpm. The closest competitor to that is the Prado's 2.8-liter four-cylinder diesel, which produces 150 kilowatt and 500 newton meter. This is considerably more than any other competition can generate. The Ford V6 is coupled with a full-time 4WD system with low-range gearing and a 10-speed automatic transmission. The tank has a capacity of 80 liters and the quoted combined cycle fuel efficiency is 8.5 liters per 100 kilometers. The Everest has a 3,500 kilogram brake trailer towing capacity. Given the Everest's hefty 2.5-ton curb weight, the V6 engine is unquestionably the better choice than the entry version's 154 kilowatt and 500 newton meter 2.0-liter bi-turbo 4. It benefits from swift shifts and carefully stacked ratios in the 10-speed automatic, which lowers back quickly when meet a reaction. It is refined at idling and smooth driving under power. If you drive in 2A, you might save a little amount of diesel, but I'd probably keep it in 4A full-time 4WD mode and let the car's computer decide where to transmit engine torque based on sensor data. With an average fuel consumption of 10.9 liters per 100 kilometers throughout around 400 kilometers of driving, most of it at highway speeds, we fell short of the claimed fuel efficiency. We would have roughly 700 kilometers of range at this pace. Our V-Box recorded a 0 to 100 km per hour pace of 9.0 seconds, which is quick but not swift, while the 80 to 120 km per hour overtaking test took 6.7 seconds regardless of drive mode. The Australian design Everest absorbs rough surfaces even on 21-inch wheels and low-profile highway tires and the body is maintained under good control in turns and undulations. Yes, there is some roll, but it is predictable and manageable. From the front seats, it's obvious how much effort has been made to keep wind and tire sound at bay. At 100 km per hour on country highways and even ungraded dirt, it's easy to talk to someone in rows 1 and 2 without straining or raising your voice. Although the electric power steering usually seems light and effortless, it spares your arms from exertion. The lane centering and adaptive cruise control systems, as well as the blind spot monitoring system all function effectively. Side windows are also big, which improves vision. The overhead view of the 360-degree cameras, 
which is suitable for tying up a trailer thanks to the cleverly integrated brake controller module, is also helpful while parking. There's a lock and rear diff, as well as some of the smoothest hill descent controls we've tested to yet, in addition to the many driveline settings and traction modes. You can easily outfigure Everett's for 4x4 using ARB accessories available from dealers. Many of the accessories that Ford Sealers would gladly offer you are created by ARB as part of a partnership between the two businesses. ARB front light bar and driving lights, various ARB bull bars, and ARB bash plates are some of the options available. Other options include a twin motor portable air compressor and inflator, a cargo crash barrier, a Garmin 57 dash cam, a recovery kit, a Seferi snorkel, switch banks, a worn VR Evo 10 this winch, and ARB snorkels. The Everest, like its Ranger sister, has the most recent 5 star NCAP safety rating from 2022, which is good news for family purchasers. NCAP gave the new Everest 86% for adult occupant protection, 93% for child occupant protection, 74% for vulnerable road user protection, and 86% for safety assist features. With capped price service every 12 months or 15,000 kilometers, Ford Australia offers a five-year unlimited mileage warranty, roadside assistance, and other benefits. Ford offers a service loaner car option as well. The Ford Pass app or the instrument cluster in the Everest will notify you when it's time to change the engine oil according on how well the engine oil is performing. The same app also shows warnings about the state and health of other vehicles. Is the Everest Platinum the cheapest choice available? No, but in this case, you truly do get what you pay for. Similar to the Ranger, it seems like the class leader. This is a serious piece of machinery with excellent performance, mostly Australian-tuned driving prowess, class-leading interior innovations, and outstanding styling. It's hard to look beyond for those looking for a big 4WD, with all the bells and whistles, capable of comfortable suburban errands as well as overland excursions and towing. Regardless of reputation, it gives the Toyota Prado a rather old impression. The only real choice is whether to save some money, omit a few luxuries, and purchase the mechanically equivalent Everest Sport instead. It's up to you, but I believe I would. Alternatively, I would get the Platinum with the all-terrain rubber as an optional extra. So there you have it, guys. Let us know in the comments section which trim you'd opt for, and don't forget to like so we know you benefited from the video. If you enjoy watching this type of content, then subscribing to our channel would see to it you don't miss out any more on all car updates today. On the top right corner of your screen is going to be a video of what YouTube thinks you should watch next, so you might want to check that out as well. Drive safe and see you in the next video.